I'm about to start building a Vans RV-10 aircraft. That is a four-seat airplane that you can actually build in your garage. If that sounds a little bit uh, crazy, it's probably because it kind of is. Uh, at least my wife seems to think so. Um, in any case, the, in order to build this airplane, uh, it takes some time. I'm looking at it right now. I'm guessing it's going to take me about four or five years, and that might prove to be optimistic. Who knows? Uh, in any case, you generally order the plane in uh, various uh, kits. And I, a few weeks ago, I ordered, or a few months ago, I guess, I ordered the empennage kit. So that's the back end of the airplane. It's what some people online refer to as the tail feathers. It's basically the tail cone, the horizontal stabilizer, and the vertical stabilizer. This is the first part of the kit. Uh, interestingly enough, they kind of charge you. It's probably the least expensive part of the kit. Uh, some people like to say it's because it's the easiest to build. Uh, my sense is that they kind of want to get you hooked on building an airplane, and so the first kit is relatively cheap. Uh, some of their other parts of the kit are not quite as cheap. So the wings are about 12,000, for example. The fuselage is about 15, something like that. Uh, in total, I think the total uh, parts for the airplane in, in, to make the body costs around $55,000 or something like that. That's going to be spread out for me at least for a couple of years. Um, it's not the most expensive part of the airplane. That would be the, air, uh, the engine and the propeller and the avionics and all that. In any case, that's for another day. Not sure how I'm going to pay for that yet, but I'm pretty confident I'll figure out how to do that at some point. In any case, I'm going to start building the empennage, and I'm about to start making my first cuts, pound my first rivets, and do all that kind of stuff. So the uh, instructions kind of for the empennage start you off building the horizontal stabilizer and then the rudder. That's section six and section eight in the manual. So I have the parts for the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder right here in front of me. Um, most of these are the parts, then they have some skins down below. You can't see it. It's a little bit off camera. So I'm about to start going through and doing this. Now, if you're a kind of person that is interested in building an airplane, you've probably spent a lot of time online looking up uh, blogs of people who've done this. There's a lot of YouTube videos from people who've done this. And uh, so you might have a good sense for how this goes. For those of you who don't, um, in order to start building an airplane, there's a couple main steps, or at least there's a couple steps that I'm looking, for, uh, looking towards uh, most immediately. The first is that when you order these parts, they all come with this blue plastic on them that you need to take off. So that's not too bad. Uh, the next problem you have is a lot of the parts have uh, burrs on them. Um, that has to do with how they're manufactured, and these can cause stress concentrations when the airplane's flying. Now, stress concentrations are uh, uh, sometimes like things like small cracks or things like that, and when the airplane is vibrating a lot, it can lead to bigger cracks. So generally what you want to do, um, they can also uh, burrs can also uh, prevent rivets from being set properly. So after I peel off all this stuff, I need to deburr the parts. Um, in addition, some parts, like this right here, uh, you actually have to use a bandsaw or some saw to kind of cut this and separate this into two parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull off all this blue stuff. I'm going to cut the parts that need to be cut. Uh, then I'm going to deburr the parts. And then I've decided I want to prime the airplane. Uh, that's another controversial thing online. Uh, some people say you don't need to prime the airplane because it's coated in AlkCAD, and that's corrosion resistant. Some people say you do. The purpose of the primer, at least on internal parts, is to resist corrosion of the aluminum. Um, I've decided I want to prime. The cost is two things. First, uh, it's going to cost more time in terms of the build, uh, but it's also uh, going to cost a little bit of weight. My guess is it'll be at about 10, 15 pounds weight to the aircraft, which may not seem like a lot, and it probably isn't, but Generally, the idea with making airplanes, as far as I can tell, is that you want them to be as light as possible, and so you try to save weight where you can. So some people think maybe you shouldn't prime and save the weight. I'm going to do that. So priming involves scuffing up the parts, at least the process I'm going to do involves scuffing up the parts, washing them off, um, and then pray, uh, spraying them with a primer. Um, I'm using Axo Nobel. Uh, it's a... Uh, Pretty nasty primer, so I usually I think I'll have to use full protective gear and all that kind of stuff. I've already bought all that kind of stuff, uh, and uh, so I'll spray that. After I spray all these parts, um, I'm going to have to like dimple uh, and things like that, and I'll talk about that in a later video, uh, and then eventually rivet it together. So I'm not a YouTuber. I've never really done this kind of thing before. I have no idea if I'm actually going to stick with this whole YouTube thing anyway. We'll see. Um, but. Uh, so I don't know how long this whole video is going to take. I anticipate putting this video together over a couple days, weeks, eventually putting it together in a 10, 15 minute video after I'm done with the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder and then posting it to YouTube. So we'll see how that goes. 
In any case, I'm going to start by pulling off some of this uh, blue plastic and cutting the parts that need to be cut. That's all the uh, blue plastic taken off all the parts, at least all the internal parts. I still got to do the skins. Um, but next step, I think I'm just going to go through for both the uh, 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 horizontal stabilizer as well as the uh, or vertical stabilizer as well as the rudder. I'm going to go through and figure out which parts need to be cut, uh, draw the lines on them, the cut lines on them that I need, and then uh, cut them, then go up to the burning. So that's it. Okay, so I've drawn all the cut lines that I need to and labeled the parts appropriately where I think that I, I have to do so. And now it's time for me to actually cut the parts in the bandsaw. So these are the first parts that I've actually cut and they don't look too bad. Uh, the uh, uh, saw definitely leaves some really rough edges. And so I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna have to definitely smooth those out when it comes time to deburr. But other than that, man, looks pretty good. I think I've cut all the parts uh, uh, with the bandsaw, at least the stuff that I can cut. Um, overall, the cuts are actually pretty rough. Um, I'm not surprised by this because I've actually cut some of these parts with the bandsaw using uh, on some of the uh, practice kits that Vans offers, which I highly recommend if you're going to be doing this. Um, in any case, uh, I cut the parts a little bit wide so I can kind of sand it down, but uh, still, they are really, really rough. There's one guy who, uh, a blog I read, who got uh, a 24, uh, I think, tips per inch saw blade. I'm using an 18 tips per inch saw blade, which I expected to be a little bit smoother, but uh, I could go online and look for a 24 inch uh, tips per inch saw blade, but I just don't have time for that. So the 18 inch, 18 tips per inch, well, I think will do. I'll be able to sand it down and smooth it out, no problem. In any case, on uh, these suckers right here, um, they're a little bit wide to put through the bandsaw, so I'm going to have to uh, cut these things with a hacksaw. Okay, so my hacksaw blade is a lot more coarse than I thought it was, so this is not going to work. Um, I'm not sure exactly what to do right now. It's 10 o'clock at night, and I'm not going to make a run to Lowe's or Home Depot to try to find a better blade. I did find a drywall saw, but I think this is going to move things in the wrong direction. Uh, fortunately, I have a Dremel with a, uh, a cutting wheel, and I'm going to try that. Uh, that should work. Okay, so I got the uh, rudder stiffeners uh, cut with the Dremel. Um, it was a lot uglier than I thought it would be, um, uh, but it worked. So now I've cut everything. Thing, all the parts, separate all the parts that need to be cut, and now I've got to deburr. So there's a lot of deburring that I need to do. I have a whole bunch of ways to deburr. Have you know all these tools that you got, like a, 
I don't know, scrapers. I've got a 3M wheel, things like that, sander. So I'm gonna kind of go through and do whatever feels right on these. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos online to kind of see how people do this sort of thing. And one thing I've quickly learned in my many minutes of airplane building is that a lot of the tools you use just depends on what's convenient. So I'm gonna start deburring and hopefully figure out what's convenient, what works, what doesn't, and all of that. So I gotta start deburring. discovered in deburring these parts is that it's really really easy to take off too much material even using the 3m wheel um, obviously it's easy to take off too much material using the uh, sandpaper um, in any case I kind of anticipated this going into it because that's what people say on the forums new people who are just doing this kind of stuff for the first time tend to take off too much material but I'm still finding I think I'm taking off too much material um, the key thing for me is as I'm running my fingers along here I keep feeling like there's roughness when maybe there's not. It kind of reminds me of when my kids were younger and they were uh, babies. Um, you know, when they cry in the middle of the night, we'd get up and go take care of them. But a lot of times me and my wife would be laying in our bed and be like, oh my gosh, we both, would both hear the child crying and would go check on our son or daughter. And in fact, they were not crying. So we started referring to that as phantom babies. So sometimes we'd think we'd hear a baby crying and we're like, okay, is that a phantom baby or a real baby? Anyway, uh, it's kind of like this with the burring, I think. Um, sometimes when I'm running my finger over it, I feel like I feel roughness when, you know, maybe there isn't roughness, or at least not the kind of roughness that I should worry about. And so I keep running it through the 3M wheel. Um, and I think that's led me to take off too much material in some cases. Now, I don't think it's been too bad. It hasn't, I don't think there's any problems with it. It's just I'm finding that in order to get off those burrs and those rough edges, you really don't need to do a lot with the 3M wheel. Um, you can kind of run it through relatively quickly, and I think that works fine. finished uh, deburring all the edges of all the parts for the, uh, both the, the vertical stabilizer as well as the rudder, um, at least all the internal parts. I still have to work on the skins. Um, the last thing I need to deburr, however, is the holes. So all the pre-punched rivet holes, they need to be deburred. And I have a tool to do this. It's basically this little swivel thing. You shove it in the hole, spin it around once or, two, once or twice, and that takes, off, takes care of all the burrs around the, uh, around the uh, pre-punched rivet holes. So there's a lot of holes. Uh, this is gonna probably take a little while. I'm quickly learning that if you wanna build an airplane, um, you've really gotta love deburring parts and sanding things and all that kind of a stuff. Um, so if that's something you wanna do is build your own airplane in your garage, uh, it's not all punching rivets, unfortunately. Anyway, it's a lot of work, but it's Saturday and I don't have anything better to do. Okay, so I have finished all of the deburring of holes, at least for now, um, all of the, uh, the, the pre-punched rivet holes. 
Um, so all of my processing of parts, at least the initial processing, is done. Um, the next steps are to start going through uh, the instructions on section six and section seven, which is going to involve cleaving things together, some match drilling, and yeah, a little bit more deburring and things like that. Um, after the parts are fully prepped, everything's match drilled, everything's ready to go, then I'm going to scuff everything up, prime it, and then rivet it all together. In any case, that's all I'm going to work on for now. Um, not sure if I'm going to keep making these videos, but if I do, the next video will involve me doing all that clicking stuff together, match drilling and all that. And for those of you who don't know what clicking is, I'll talk about a little bit of that if I do another video. Um, in any case, that's it for now.